Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aaron Steyer and I'm a fertility physician here at CCRM Boston Fertility. And thank you for joining us today for our uh, presentation on nutritional pearls and pitfalls when we have positive ovarian syndrome or PCOS. Uh, PCOS is one of those kind of challenging and complex reproductive disorders that affects 8% of women and is typically characterized by using lack of ovulation releasing or regular releasing of eggs or lack of regular menses, and sometimes increased acne and other um, signs of increased male hormones that's called testosterone and other androgens. Um, it's a significant cause of infertility and also of long-term side effects um, that translate to cardiovascular heart, heart, heart disease. But I think it really poses a lot of metabolic and nutritional challenges for many of my patients who come to see me for fertility uh, needs. And so I'm, I'm really happy and honored and pleased to have Jennifer Redman joining us today. Uh, she's an integrative nutrition coach who will be sitting here and helping us just discuss the complex nutritional um, topics that surround PCOS. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Dr. Steyer. So can you walk us through, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice? Yeah, sure. So like you said, I'm a certified integrated nutrition health coach, and I've worked in the infertility field for more than 15 years. And I help women with infertility take really a 360 degree view of their wellness so that they can um, boost their ability to conceive and at the same time really feel deeply supported and in control of their health journey. Thanks so much. And I thank you for joining us for this really <clears throat> important topic. I can just say personally over the past 20 years um, of being a physician and seeing the PCOS, it's definitely this balance of, of um, you know, fertility and also of, me of metabolism and abnormal metabolism and also diabetes and some resistance. Um, I really enjoy taking care of patients with PCOS because it really does pose a lot of dietary nutritional um, aspects that we don't typically see in other, in other um, facets of reproductive medicine, um, especially with, you know, glucose intolerance or, or borderline diabetes or high insulin levels. Um, definitely something that I think many people have many questions about, especially those who have the disease and really want to learn more about. So can you walk us through just initially, you know, what is the significance of diet nutrition when it relates to people with PCOS? Yeah, so um, studies have definitely shown that lifestyle modification for women with PCOS can have, um, can really increase pregnancy rates. So mm -hmm. when we say lifestyle modification, we're talking about diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and many women with PCOS are really able to regain regular periods um, and boost their fertility and reduce the symptoms of PCOS that you spoke about really by altering their diet and lifestyle. Yeah, I know when I initially uh, see a patient, it, there's different forms of PCOS. It's a syndrome. And so by saying a syndrome means there's different manifestations of this disease that can look, come in different forms or different appearances. You know, the classic's going to be the obese or overweight woman with PCOS who doesn't have regular periods, who has increased hair growth. And then you have the more leaner PCOS women who are of normal body habits, normal body weight, who also don't have menses or have increased hair growth and other signs of increased um, androgens or male hormones. Um, and so it's, it's always this um, complex uh, situation, really assessing and understanding what type of PCOS there is. Going from assessment in the office to assessment nutrition-wise, can you walk us through what you're assessing for, what you're looking for when you see a patient who presents with PCOS or suspected PCOS? Yeah, absolutely. So um, to your point, you know, PCOS can be different depending on the person. So mm -hmm. If a client comes to me, which sometimes happen, and they say, well, I think I have PCOS, I really encourage them to meet with a fertility doctor mm -hmm. like yourself yeah. who can help them determine if that is in fact the issue. Mm -hmm. um, with all my clients, we take a, the, our first session, we take a really deep dive into a health history. And that looks at your cycle and your mm -hmm. fertility history along with your general current and past health history, and then other goals, which with PCOS, as you said, you know, might include weight loss or balancing mm -hmm. blood sugar or mm -hmm. helping with acne or mm -hmm. reducing cravings for sugar and carbs. Um, and then we take a look at your diet, but we also look at exercise. We mm -hmm. look at stressors. 
um, we look at self-care. So it's really a 360 degree view of your health with that focus on PCOS and your PCOS symptoms. Now you mentioned stressors. I find that many people with PCOS have a little bit, maybe more stress than the typical fertility patient for several reasons, whether it be um, weight issues or also just worrying about developing diabetes or having insulin resistance. Can you comment on what you see in your practice in terms of stress and how it affects their mindset when they see you? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually recently read a study, and I, I don't quite remember what the what the um, percentage was, but it definitely there's had shown that there is increased stress and anxiety mm -hmm. in women with PCOS. Mm -hmm. And so um, in my practice, in addition to um, the treatment goals of balancing blood sugar, reducing insulin resistance, right. um, regulating your cycle, that stress piece is a really important piece because when you're in that fight or flight mode yes um it's just it's wreaking more havoc on your system so while we always start with the food piece and the exercise piece that mind body piece is a really important piece of yes. um of the goals and and what we do um and it really benefits my clients a lot i mean i think it's it definitely shows you how this is a very unique um, reproductive disorder, and as you mentioned, insulin levels and glucose, and we know that these patients have a higher rate or risk of developing diabetes and or, or insulin resistance or prediabetes, mm -hmm. and that can also affect their ability to lose weight easily compared to others who don't have it. You mentioned the stressors. Any other treatment goals you think about besides those three um, items you mentioned? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, based on their personal situation, it, mm -hmm. it might be helping with that stubborn weight loss or clearing of acne. It might be helping your hormones to just find a natural balance. It might be regulating your cycle. You mentioned earlier, you know, irregular cycles. So um, those are all things in this sort of holistic approach that we look at. Can you walk us through best practice nutritional dietary items that you may suggest to optimize um, someone's metabolic and health state with PCOS? Yeah, absolutely. So um, definitely eating whole fresh foods mm -hmm. um, as opposed to prepackaged or pre-prepared foods. Um, women with PCOS, it's often rec um, recommended that they eat four to, small, four to six small meals yes. a day. Um, eating more frequent, smaller meals rather than three meals a day can really mm -hmm. help maintain blood sugar levels. Good to know, yeah. Yeah, and so along with that, you know, don't skip breakfast. Um, you know, when you're talking about those four to six small yeah. meals a day, make sure you're including breakfast. Yeah. Um, eating a low sugar diet is important. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell my clients to read labels. That's super important because sugar comes in so many forms and has so many names like agave or corn syrup, yes. or fructose. <laughs> Sweetener. I mean, I could go on and on, yeah. right? Um, limit processed carbs. Mm -hmm. So carbs are converted to sugar for energy. So speaking of sugar. So the things you want to skip there are bread, pasta, mm -hmm. pastries, mm -hmm. and rice. Yeah. Um, healthy proteins at every mm -hmm. meal. Um, protein is a really great um, source of energy for your body. Um, so, you know, healthy sources of protein are fish, poultry, beans, nuts. Um, fiber, really good. Again, going back to those whole fresh foods, yeah. so fruits, vegetables, whole grains are full of fiber. And okay. then um, healthy fats. So avocado, extra virgin olive oil, nut butters like almond butter, peanut butter, um, and fatty fish like wild salmon are right. all really great um, ways to add to your diet. I mean, I really like your comment about the frequent meals during the day. I find that some of my patients who are the ones who are, have weight issues, try to not eat as much. And I think that's really not the thing to do. I mean, you don't want to all of a sudden not eat and eat and I'll see this big insulin spike that goes up and then you're not really losing weight. It's nice to have more of a basal level of insulin that's lower instead of having these big spikes because that definitely can also affect your heart health and cardiovascular health as well. So I'm glad to hear that something as a nutritional specialist that you recommend as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it's super important to just maintain that even keel. Yeah. So what things do you see as unique challenges of people with PCOS who you see? What, what are the things that you find are most difficult for people with PCOS mm -hmm. to um, really embrace or to find as getting good results? Can you, can you walk us through the challenges you have with folks who have PCOS? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I think, um, you know, 
PCOS, like all infertility, as you talked about in the beginning, isn't one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so my clients' um, goals might be different. You know, everybody's going to have different goals. So the key for me is to really dig deep to understand what her symptoms are, what her goals are, and mm -hmm. create a plan to address them. So it might be um, the acne or the thin hair that you talked about. She might be overweight or have irregular periods. Mm -hmm. It might be a combination of those or none of those. Right. Um, right. And like you mentioned, these women also have greater anxiety and depression. So it's really layered. So I think yeah. that's sort of what the challenge is. But when we can dig deep um, and really understand what her goals are, both um, holistically with her whole body mm -hmm. as well as her mm -hmm. fertility, mm -hmm. you know, then we can start to make some headway. Now, one of the more challenging aspects of PCOS is those who are lean, where they really can't lose weight because they're already lean. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you see different about them than those who, have, who are obese PCOS that you do differently or you, you see them very similarly depending upon, you know, you know, what, what they come in with for as a complaint. Right. So, I mean, obviously um, their complaint is different, right? Yeah. But, um, but it's really learning how to fuel the body with food mm -hmm. in the way that's going to work best for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I would still go back to that, um, you know, starting with the food and mm -hmm. starting with the, the whole foods and the fruits and vegetables and the whole grains and eating the meals, you know, regularly, not putting any more stress on your body and really digging into that mind body piece, which is going to help overall too. It's really, again, that 360 degree view of the health and wellness. Yeah, many people, you know, talk about fruits and vegetables, especially fruits, and then some fruits being more glycemic than others. And of course, you want to avoid, mm -hmm. you know, really too much of a glucose or sugar load. Are there any fruits to avoid, especially in this in this scenario where this syndrome is characterized by issues with glucose or sugar breakdown metabolism? Sure. So there are definitely um, uh, fruits and vegetables that are fruits that are higher and lower in the glycemic index. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really um, encourage, I almost like to encourage what I call crowding out. So let's okay. focus on the good things um, that will naturally crowd out the other things. So a great place to start with fruits and vegetables or fruits specifically are berries. Berries are really high in antioxidants and really low on the glycemic level. Um, I'd be happy to provide, I actually have a, a list that I'd be happy to well, That's great. To Thank you. I would love to have um, that for our patients. kind of ranks them from a glycemic standpoint, and that might be really helpful. Because I hear that like blackberries and raspberries are some of the lower mm -hmm. glycemics, um, glycemic berries, and then you have others such as strawberries are a little bit higher in glycemic. Right. Can you just give us your top three lowest glycemic berries so everybody can know that today? Um, I would say blackberries. Um, Blueberries and raspberries. Okay, so that's good to those three of the top three yeah. um, for lowest. That's good to know because I think that when we hear berries, it's like there's a lot of different types of berries out there. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's a really good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Or things I like, like cherries, may be a little bit higher in the glycemic right. index. Right, exactly. <laughs> Especially when the spring and, and summer comes, I love to have yeah. cherries. So that's great to know that. And, we'll, and I, I, I love to see that list when you uh, after sure. you've done today as well. Um, let me think, anything, any other pitfalls that you see with uh, PCOS patients you see habits they get into that you try to break them out of that um, are common in this population? Yeah, so I think the things that can really have adverse effects on um, patients with PCOS are, mm -hmm. again, going back to sugar. So, you know, we want to think about sugar, but also sugary foods and beverages, so mm -hmm, sodas. Yes. Um, quote unquote energy drinks that are often labeled mm -hmm. as you know, like healthy. Um, the white products, white flour, white rice, potatoes. Um, dairy often is not a good idea when you have PCOS. That's good to know. I mean, yep. that's really good to know. Yep. And then um, wine and other alcoholic beverages. Yes, yes. Now, one thing you mentioned before is fiber. And I think everybody's trying to think about what's the best quality fiber you get in the food with actually not compromising taste and, and satiety. Can you walk us through you know, fiber powerful foods that um, PCOS patients um, can think about? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when you think about fiber, um, I love all those leafy greens, super good for you. 
um, and just have a ton of fiber. So think about those, um, any kind of greens, you know, mm -hmm. kale, broccoli, all those vegetables are really, really rich in fiber and go back to that point of eating um, whole foods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So for your, after you have your first consult, consults with patients with PCOS, can you kind of give us a summary of kind of what you, how you would kind of walk someone through um, what their take home points would be after they see you for the initial consult and maybe follow up visits? What are the, the big ticket items, the big topics that, you know, they should implement in their lifestyle? Sure. So I think the big things are, um, to, again, to go back to eating those four to six mm -hmm. small meals mm -hmm. a day to That's help maintain to blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. um, don't skip breakfast. Mm -hmm. uh, focus on a low sugar diet and limit processed carbs. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to get those healthy proteins at each meal. So, you know, fish, um, chicken, there are a lot of good vegetarian proteins. You want to increase fiber. And um, outside of the food, definitely look at exercise to yes. meet your mm -hmm. body's needs and your weight goals. And also that stress reduction piece um, is super important. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Jennifer, again, for letting your expertise and just uh, your wealth of knowledge. I mean, I think this is such a difficult area, not just for patients, but also physicians, because the data as well as recommendations change um, over time, especially with this challenging disease as PCOS. They have unique issues that they really have to look at it. So I thank you for providing uh, more information for myself, but also my colleagues and our patients to do the best they can to optimize fertility and their metabolism and also their long-term health. So thanks so much for joining us and thanks for um, providing everything. Oh, absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, thank you so much for joining and um, um, be safe and well. Bye-bye.